Hey, you pet photographer, Monique Renee here of Silver Paw Studio, and today we are going to talk about pricing your portrait photography. Ah, this is a big subject and we easily get overwhelmed. There's a lot of information and calculations and ways to do it. And I want to simplify it for you today. I don't think I can get any simpler than this. Huh? Welcome to my potato pricing recipe. Aha. Okay, we're gonna look at this through something other than the lens of a photographer. Hold on, let me get my props. Okay, I got my recipe box, my potato of course, one more thing, and apron. All right, congratulations, you've produced the perfect potato dish. You're passionate about it, Everybody loves it, and you'd like to make some money with this. But how do you price your tasty tuber triumphs? Hmm. So let's think about how much a potato costs. A bag of potatoes at my store is about five pounds, costs around $2.50. And let's just say there's 10 potatoes in there, right? So that is 25 cents per potato. And logic would say that we've all been taught with photography is you just 4x that, and so I should charge $1 per potato. I mean, after all, potatoes are readily available, they're inexpensive, every grocery store pretty much has them, they're pretty easy and basic to cook, most people have the tools to cook potatoes, and you don't want to gouge your customers. You can't possibly charge four times, more than four times, what it costs you for this lovely potato, right? Hmm. Somehow that's just not adding up to me though. So let's take a look at the recipe that I've got here. And now I'm getting warm, so slippers are coming off. Bye bye slippers. All right, if I look in the recipe box, first off, we have prep. Very first thing when you are sitting down to work on your prices and before is the prep, just like any good recipe. And what I want you to do first is take out the garbage. Take out the garbage. Your rotten, moldy ideas of what you think pricing should be. You worked hard to perfect this recipe. You deserve to be paid well for this scrumptious spud creation. So you need to own it and feel like you deserve it. Your discerning potato peeps will gladly gobble up your scrumptious spuds, okay? Take out your mind garbage. I have my garbage can down there, okay? So that is a prep step right there. The next part of this recipe is to think about your goals and your life and your lifestyle. Think about ideally how much money you would like to make per year, X number of dollars. And then think of your expenses. Well, let's just pretend that you have a mortgage in a mid-sized town in, a, in suburbia. Say whatever your mortgage is. And then also, you have three old dogs that need their meds and their food and their sweaters. <laughs> so that's just one example. Take a look at your life. So for your scrumptious potato recipes, do you, is it work better for you and your income goals to be a caterer, like a weekend caterer? You just wanna put aside Saturdays, cook some delicious potatoes for people, and then do something else the rest of the week. That's an option. Do you wanna have a full-time, full-service, sit-down restaurant? Hmm, those are just a couple of options. Maybe there's re uh, restaurant ideas in between also. But something to think about here is when you're thinking about how much time you're gonna spend, is what is it gonna take? to make it worth your time to pull you away from your three elderly dogs, your family, your favorite hobbies, your traveling, whatever it is. What is it going to take to pull you away from those things? The last thing you want is to be going out on a Saturday, catering your potatoes, thinking, I could be out skiing, I could be out walking my dogs, I could be doing so many other things, this just isn't worth it. 
You don't want to be there. I've been there with different jobs. I definitely don't want that for my potato restaurant, okay? So really think about that. What's it going to be worth for your time to pull you away from all the other things that you love in your life? For me, I love my job, but I want to work to live. I don't want to live to work. That's kind of your goals, your lifestyle, a little bit in the prep area of our potato pricing recipe. Oh, this is fun. Your business model. Okay. Uh, here, uh, you try to decide what your overall model is be. So for our potatoes, we could do drive-through fast food. We could do high volume amount of potatoes, think French fries. So we've got just your basic French fry, your basic potato, probably fried, a little bit of salt in a paper bag that people take do takeout or they just sit in like a little lobby with some plastic chairs. Great that people really like and they need and they want all the time. People love their french fries and their fast food potatoes, right? Ooh, potato olays, mm, those are so good. Anyway, uh, or do you want fine dining? Do you wanna have a nice atmosphere where there's gourmet organic red potatoes and your special 10 spice blend and three different dipping sauces and candlelight and soft music. Is that more what you envision your scrumptious spuds being served at? Of course, there's ways in between. You can have a family style restaurant. You can offer potato like french fries or maybe some nice garlic mashed potatoes. There's a, there's a middle ground there too. But the things that we think of first with our scrumptious potatoes are fast food french fries or nice sit down gourmet. So that's something you need to think about is your business model. And if you're not quite sure, as we go through this, you can maybe skip this step for now and come back to it. Once we get through the rest of this recipe, you might go, hmm, I fit better in one category or the other, okay? What do we got next? Are you following me so far, right? You get it? How this relates to our photography? Okay, back in character. Okay, ingredients. Um, so there are three ingredients that go into figuring out the pricing for your potatoes. Three ingredients. There are your fixed costs, which is your cost of doing business. There are your variable costs, uh, things that just vary over the day, the week, the year, things like that. Uh, and then there's your COGS, your cost of goods sold. So those are your three ingredients in your pricing. Hmm. Let's go over them a little bit more though. First up, if I can get my recipe card out of here, is so your fixed costs. This is your cost of doing business. Now, this is if no one even walked into your restaurant, all the different things you needed to pay for regardless if you have clients or not. So I'm thinking your stove, your pan, your knives, um, the actual kitchen you're standing in, the electricity to run everything, your refrigerator, towels, aprons, maybe a fryer, um, some kind of a payment system, uh, your potato weekly magazine. Gotta have that. You wanna know what's happening in the industry, right? Let's see your water, your insurance, like you get it, cutting board all the different things that you need, your fixed costs of doing business, whether someone walks in or not, all right? So just kind of jot all that down. Think or think about it, okay? As we go through this, be kind of thinking about it. I'm gonna give you actually a free tool at the end that you just plug the numbers in, okay? So for now, make some notes, think about that. What was the second ingredient? Let's see. Oh, variable costs. And these can be in any order. Variable costs, like each year you'll pay a different amount of taxes. Uh, you might travel to some of, maybe you're catering, you might travel to some of these events. Uh, you might have different marketing or advertising budgets throughout the year, especially if it's something seasonal. 
Uh, you might want to take some classes on Spud Central online. Uh, there are always new things coming along in the potato industry. And of course, maybe you need seasonal help. I just realized that was a pun. Anyways, uh, maybe there is a certain time of year that potatoes really sell well. And so sometimes you'll need to hire staff. So those are all kind of variable, right? Uh, so think about how that could affect your business. Okay, you're not gonna have a solid number on that, but you need to consider it. These ones can really get you if you don't think about them. Do, 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 do. Third part, the COGS, uh, the cost of goods sold. So that is when somebody orders one of your potato dishes, what does it cost to deliver that potato dish? Is it one potato? Is it a five pounds of potatoes? How much spices do they need in that? Uh, do they want any dipping sauce? How are you gonna deliver it? Uh, is it a to-go box? <laughs> uh, how are you going to present it to them? Do you need special packaging, special oils, anything else that you need every single time you sell one of these, uh, it will be different. So whether someone buys one potato uh, dish or they cater a whole event or they have a whole group come to your restaurant, um, those are your costs of goods sold. Like we talked about at the beginning, although my cost might be 25 cents, you can see how all these things are starting to add up, but you need to know the cost of your potato. Sounding good so far? All right, make some notes on that too. Personally, I like the spicier sauces. Just saying. Chipotle? Mm, yeah. Okay, then ha, your final price. What is your final price? Let's get these recipe cards back here. Your final price is... Dun, dun, dun. We've got, I've got my cheat sheet recipe, a sub recipe back here. It's your, I want to put this in the right order, your fixed costs, right? Plus your variable costs, plus your cost of goods sold, plus the profit we want to make. Remember at the very beginning, we said this is how much money we'd like to make per year. We have those three old dogs we need to care for, okay? Plus the money you want to make divided by the number of dishes a year that you want to cook. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many do you want to serve? How many potato dishes do you want to serve? Now, let's say that you want it to be a french fry kind of fast food, high volume, but you only want to work on the weekends, but you'd like to make $50,000 a year. I'm just throwing numbers out there. <laughs> so how many of your fast food bags of fries do you need to make every Saturday to get to that $50,000? So let's think about that for a second, because I've got some notes here. Every good recipe has notes at the bottom. <laughs> yes. So. Think about, do you have enough variety and options? Do you have red potatoes, Yukon gold potatoes, Idaho potatoes? Do you have them scalloped and fried and in a casserole? Do you have enough options to even get people to the average sale you'd like to make every time they order? If you only have one recipe, you can just base it off of that too. Simple, simple offerings are fine as well, but you might find that when you plug all those numbers in and you can only do so many of these dishes, you might need to add more variety. And then think, are you drastically higher or drastically lower than competitors? Big word of warning here though. This is where your garbage, your mind mold is gonna come back and you're gonna do the comparison trap. You don't know what your competitors, all of their expenses, all of their pots and pans and knives and kitchen, you don't know how much that costs your competitors. So be really careful. But if you can look at your final price and go, mm, that's real, real exclusive, then you're probably gonna have to adjust. Okay, look at the cost of living in your area, what people typically make, and think about what they might typically spend on a night out eating your scrumptious spuds, okay? You know, also push yourself a little bit. I want you to be kind of reasonable, but a tiny bit maybe outside your comfort zone. Because here's the thing, like, 
Once someone's used to paying your fast food salted fries in a bag, it's really, really difficult to get those same people to come over here to your fine dining with a candle, um, amazing French scalp potatoes, you know? Uh, and vice versa. The people eating your amazing scalloped potatoes likely aren't going to switch over all of a sudden and now be french fry people. So when you're thinking about your model, like remember at the top I said, uh, do you want to be fast food? Do you want to be fine dining or somewhere in the middle? Uh, this is kind of where that comes into play. And then also something to consider on my notes here is, do you truly have the support and the time? Uh, a lot of people talk about SMART goals, so think about that acronym. But if you think, okay, I only have Saturdays, but my French fries are on this super long 10 hour process. Okay, do you really have time to do that? And then think about support in your life. Do you have people? Do you have a forum? Do you have extra savings in your account? All the different kinds of support that you might need. Do you have that? So just also something to think about. It's really hard to have a potato restaurant all by yourself. Yeah. Uh, and one more note is that free pricing calculator I talked to you about, I got permission from the Pet Photographers Club to put a link in the description here that you can go. They have a free average sale price calculator on their website. Yes. So you go to the link in the description I have here for them. And it is an Excel spreadsheet. And you put all those numbers in that we just talked about. Now, it's not going to be potato terms, darn it. <laughs> but you'll put in all of your different numbers, your goal of how much you'd like to make, how many weeks a year, things like that. And it'll give you how much you're going to need to make. Here's my final note, okay? Uh, I want you to be like real and honest with yourself. If you plug in those numbers and they're like, it seems like a lot. I want you to decide like, again, how much is worth pulling you away from your family. If you want to continue to be a hobby or a volunteer photographer, that is awesome. You could totally do that. But once you kind of step into being a business owner and charging for your scrumptious potatoes, then you need to do the calculations. You do, or else you're just gonna be upset all the time, thinking, ah, oh, I just, huh, I'm not making any money here and it's not worth my time. And I'm sure we've all had jobs like that. Think back to maybe the very first job you had and it didn't feel like very much money and you're like, oh man, I wish I made more money. So now you're at the point where you have a lot of skills, probably more skills than you give yourself credit for, okay? Be, be realistic. I want to tell you a little st story real quick. I plugged my numbers into the calculator and my cost of doing business had gone up dramatically since I raised my prices about four years ago. And I looked at the number and I thought, Whew, okay, that is a huge difference in average sale than I typically had, but I did it. I did it and I sent off my pricing and guess what? Didn't say anything. Nobody said anything. <laughs> it's, it's in our head. It's that mind mold. Take out the garbage. Before you open your restaurant, take out as much garbage as you can, okay? I really want you to believe in yourself. Most people that I talk to undervalue their skills. You un, uh, potentially undervalue uh, not just your your craft skills, but your people skills, your business skills, don't underestimate yourself. Uh, you're probably more skilled than you think you are. And then finally, I do want to say that if you do need help, you need support, we're back to pet photographer, I'm here for you. I've got propetphotog.com uh, with a lot of free resources on there, some paid resources as well. We have the free Facebook group and we have the comment section right here on YouTube. So I really want you to think of me as a support person in your journey through pet photography and for pricing and marketing and anything else that you possibly need. If you are lacking that support in your life and, and starting off this endeavor feeling a little worried about that, I'm here for you. Okay, uh, I want to be able to help you. Propetphotog.com is the hub for everything. And I'll just I'll have links down below for all of it. And of course, you can always drop me a note. 
That is all I have for you today for Monique's potato pricing recipe. Huh? What'd you think? Was that analogy easier to digest <laughs> than talking about our photography stats, right? Our cameras, our liability insurance, our SD cards, our PPA memberships, meh. We all know that. I think we just whoosh, gloss right past it. So I hope this uh, scrumptious spud, <laughs> I should have named that the restaurant. I should have written on my apron, scrumptious spuds. <laughs> hmm. Anyways, uh, I hope this analogy was helpful to you and I'll see you in the next video. As always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's. <laughs> Must eat this. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, exquisite. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.